Kalimera. Kalimera. <laughs> Galimera. Good day. We mentioned this now. Literally, good day. Gali is good for feminine uh, nouns now. And then we have mera, day. So the day is. Imera. Imera. No? Galimera, imera. Good. What was the word for here? Edo. Edo. The word for there, the word for there was a key. A key. A key. So we have edo and a key. If you want to say that day, you will say a kini i mera. So we saw when we say this problem, for example, we say this, the problem, in the same way we're going to say that, the problem. So that day, a kini i mera. <laughs> How would you say that road? What was the word for road? Dromos, equinos o dromos. Bravo, very good. Equinos o dromos. So now with what you know about Greek, you can find just one version of equinos. We saw ekini, and you know what to do with it. Ekini, equinos, equino. A way to refer to a person that is quite common in Greek is atomo. Atomo. What does atomo mean? Atom. Atom. No, that's very interesting. So mm -hmm. a person is an atom, mm -hmm. no? And and it's true. No, we are just it individually one cell of the big picture, and that's reflected there in Greek. So a person, ena atomo. What gender is that, ena atomo? Mm. Neutral. <laughs> neutral, good, neutral. How would you say that person? Ekino to atomo. Very good. Ekino to atomo. Very good. Good evening is Galovradi with Delta Vradi. Galovradi. And it's used exclusively for goodbye rather than good evening, which in English we used to say hello as well. So maybe it's a little bit more like good night. But Vradi means evening. What gender is Vradi if we say Galovradi? Oh, neutral. Neutral. Good. Hello. We know there we have mm. the neutral ending. So how would you say that evening? Ekino to vradi. Very good. Ekino to vradi. Good. So we've seen a little bit in Greek how adjectives describing words change in their own way, no? We have kalos, kali, kalo. But kalo, apart from an adjective, is also a verb. Now kalo as an adjective is written K-A, the Greek L, which we were talking mm -hmm. about, and O. And O like the English O. Kalo, as a verb, how would it have to be written, that final O sound? Like a M. Like an upside down M. Yes. <laughs> or like a W. A W, okay. <laughs> uh, kalo, good, with the omega mm. showing showing you that it's a verb in writing, yeah. no? So we have kalo, good, or galos, or gali. And then kalo, as a verb, means I invite or I call. You have both of these meanings. Mm -hmm. So, kalo as a verb means I invite or I call. And we have the accent on the end, no? Like, poro, I can, yeah. prospato, I try. How would you say, I, I'm inviting you? Se, alo. Se, kalo. The word for him is ton, 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 ton. Let's start with a T and O. And how do we get that N sound? From a V. From a V. Good. The letter looks like V. V. Ton. So that means him. So if you want to say, I'm inviting him. Ton kalo. Ton kalo. Good. How would you say, we're inviting him? Ton kalume. Ton kalume. Ton kalume. We're inviting him, if we want to emphasize the we. Emis ton kalume. Good. Emis ton kalume. Good, we, we're inviting him. The word for us, so we've seen the word for we, which is emis. The word for us is mas. So how would we say he's inviting us? Mas kali. Good, and you're keeping the accent on the end there. Mas kali. Now you would know that this is a verb in writing because the e sound on the end there is spelled ei. We mentioned briefly that ei also gives us this e sound and it's used with the verb ending for he, she or it. No? Mas kali. How would you emphasize the word for he? He is inviting us. Aftos mas kali. Good. Aftos mas kali. 
Good. You're inviting us. How would you say you're inviting us? Mas Calis. Mas Calis. Mas Calis. Aren't you inviting us? Uh, then Mas Calis. Very good. Then Mas Calis. Aren't you inviting us? Good. Para calor. Para calor means I plead or request. And actually, it's used like please. In Greek, you will hear this a lot. Para calor. Please. Para calor. So, para, we also have in English. We have it in parasite, paranormal. Paranoid. Paranoid is from nous, mind, or nous, paranoia. Uh, beside or beyond the mind. So, para means something like beyond or alongside. So, we have calo, I invite, or I call, and para calo, beyond or alongside that. We have, I plead, use like Please. No. <laughs> when we plead something, we are inviting somebody to do something for us. So, <laughs> para calo, to plead or, you know, please. You will also hear, I plead as please, para calo, and also, I plead you as please. So, how would that sound? I plead you. Mm, se para calo. Se para calo. You will hear that as well. Para, we can put with our verb for I stay. What was I stay? Meno. Meno. And how will it sound if you put para there with it? Para meno. Para meno. Para meno means I remain. I remain. So very similar in meaning to I stay, no? Just mm. maybe a little bit more insisting. I don't know. Mm. Maybe you would like to say we're staying here. Like we're not going anywhere. Then you would say we're remaining mm. here. How would that be? Mm. Para meno. Para menume edo. Para menume edo. We're remaining here like we're staying put. We're not going anywhere. Para menume edo. How would you say we're remaining there? Para menume eki. Para menume eki. Very good. 